Next up, we have a um, somewhat well-known movie. At least I think it's well-known. Um, 2009's Lay to Rust. Movie is probably one of the simplest plots you'll hear. A woman wakes up in a casket, should I say a dad box, and she's somewhat dragged, somewhat confused. She doesn't know her name. She doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know where she's supposed to be or how she got there. She probably doesn't know much. So she's confused. She manages to get out of the mortuary of the funeral home and tries to find some assistance. And all the while, there's a killer after her who kills people in quite violent ways. Um, she eventually finds some people to help her out and they sort of fight the killer and that's virtually the movie. Um, there's not a whole lot of backstory for pretty much any of the characters. Um, and the backstory we do get toward the end doesn't really do much in my opinion. But it's, uh, it, the, the, th- the plot itself is, is somewhat thought bare, but I think most people watch this movie for the spousal of Fox, which I think are pretty solid. I can't think of any killer in this movie that disappointed me. So if you're going in it for that type of thing, then you'll probably be okay with this one. What were your thoughts on this one, Chucky? Yeah. Um, I mean, sp- speaking of some decent titties, I mean, um, <laughs> the main main uh, <laughs> woman in this movie, Jesus, she had, she had a big rack. Um <laughs> I almost felt like uh, Jim Carrey and Liar Liar. I'm like, Mama. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's funny you mention that because when I was watching this movie, I actually didn't notice that until like the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like it's like what, it was once one of the scenes toward the end. I forget which one, but like it's toward the end. Like, oh wait, she's actually it's pretty attractive. For me. <laughs> be, believe me, I, it was on my mind the entire time. The entire time. <laughs> um, but uh, in addition to that, as you're saying, it does That's have gonna some... That's going to be 95% of Chucky's movie, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, it certainly helps. <laughs> but yeah, like you're saying, the movie does have some really epic kill scenes, or at least really violent kill scenes. And to be honest, if, you, if you're looking for something with some pretty gory, violent slasher type kills especially from the modern era of you know the past 10 15 years this is definitely a movie to be looking at the character of chrome skull i mean he's not it's a decent character it's kind of like a tier two level slasher it's not quite on the same level as you know the the michaels and freddies but um yeah to be honest i'd barely call him a character since we pretty much don't learn anything about him he exists. He's a he's a yeah. he's a character. Or does he? Well, I mean, you learn more in the sequel as well, but unfortunately, yeah, uh, probably a little too much. But no, I mean, just from a pure slasher aspect, I I, I don't see how this movie could really um, disappoint you too much. I, I know some of the acting's a little up and down. It's I mean, it's it's not a it ain't no Shakespearean play going on in this movie but he wants to make me dad yeah yeah and who was it kevin gage yeah so, some of his some of his like crying scenes i was just kind of like, mm. <laughs> anyways <laughs> i don't uh, have to make his character I, I really did like his character yeah, I, I, I liked his character too um but uh to be honest it's not a whole lot to say about the movie. It, it's just a scene. I mean, for me, there's not a whole, a whole lot to say about it. It's, it's just got some really epic kill scenes. It moves at a pretty decent pace. You know, the, there's constant attack scenes throughout. The character the, of Chrome Skull is pretty decent. The actors do okay. I don't think they did a spectacular job, but enough to, you know, make it a an exciting movie. I guess one thing that, and I mentioned this a while back uh, when we were kind of just briefly talking about the movie, there was this uh, Taylor Swift video, I think the very first video that she ever did, and there's this love interest in the video who actually appears in a scene in this movie and has a really epic (laughs) death scene, so (laughs) I I recommend you watch that Taylor Swift music video, I can't remember the song, but I think it's that You Belong With Me song. Well, I usually do go out of my way to watch Taylor Swift videos, but I would do it for you, Chucky. Well, I thought I thought you 
said last time that you, you enjoy her music. I enjoy her music. I don't like the videos. Ah, okay. But... Well, okay. Um, anywho, uh, I, I recommend actually watching that music video, not for the song, but just to kind of work up your hatred for no. this pretty teen boy. And then, <laughs> even is though his the, ca- um, his character is this in- the I'm sorry. Is this a tire a tire ceiling guy? Or is this the other guy? Uh, well, no, this is the the guy that runs a little... Oh, well, he, he was running the convenience store. You know, oh, got it, okay. With the shotgun. Um, he, so, in, in the movie, his character's actually okay. Like, he, he he's kind of a good guy. And, but, if you just want to watch a guy with a kind of Justin Bieber-type haircut get killed brutally, there you go. That's a <laughs> pretty brutal kill. Um, well, this, a lot of I them mean, are. This, <laughs> yes. I think probably one of my favorite ones, and this is, I mean, I've seen this one like three times. One of the ones that always sticks with me is probably the disembowelment from the the uh, woman, you know, I don't know, the third or fourth woman, you know, gets her stomach sliced open and her intestines start falling out. You know, that's, I think it's pretty well done. What, there's also a, se- a sequence in this movie where they find a bunch of our previous victims um, like in coffins and caskets and this all types of like um dismemberments and you know some of them are decapitated. You know, I think they find a body that literally both arms and legs are cut off. It's a very, a uh, very uh, sickening, sadistic, you know, type sequence. You know, shows just the pure amount of violence this guy inflicts on people. So that that scene that definitely stood out to me. Um and. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know that's that's probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Actually, um, as good as the kills and as good as some of the um, the final confrontation is, um, that scene had a very uh, dark feel that I really enjoyed. <sighs> I think my main problem with this movie, if I have a main problem, is I I don't I I get it you know explained in the movie. But the the dragged out nature of the woman, just uh, toward the beginning, this just gets in my nerves. Like, uh, she can you know barely communicate. She is entirely incoherent. I just I get it, but I find it a bit annoying. Related toward the end, we find something out about the uh, main character that we didn't know before, and of course the main character herself has you know type, some type of amnesia, and she doesn't quite remember. Um, and that revelation. I mean, to me, it doesn't change anything, and it didn't seem to change anything in the movie either. Like, no character seemed to react differently to it. I don't know. It just, it just didn't mean anything to me. And one other thing I wanted to point out is that um, the uh, if if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, the woman who played Cersei on Game of Thrones also is in this movie playing a somewhat sympathetic character, which is interesting to see. So, that was just something that I noticed this time around that I didn't notice last time around, because by that point I'd never watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Game of Thrones. So. That's okay. <laughs> well, I would certainly recommend reading the books, uh, which you I know, know I, another you book know I, I, I know. <laughs> you know I don't read. <laughs> um, I, know, I think Lady Rust has some fantastic special facts. I think it's for the most part, it's almost flawless insofar as the goal. I just was missing some things in the story. The fact that we don't learn virtually anything about the killer, just... No, I mean, I, 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 if you've seen the sequel, you know we learn some things there. So, obviously, if you over-explain something, it also ruins the fact, and there are plenty of sequels that might do that. But having just a blank slate, a guy with a knife going around killing people and taping it without any type of explanation whatsoever just I mean I just wanted something and we didn't really get anything you know which is fine there's still a decent goal because of that I still give this an above average rating I'll I'll probably give it like a 7.5 and it's close but I'll probably round up to an 8 it's certainly out of the four horror movies tonight this is actually probably my least favorite even like classic blues, I enjoyed a bit more than the well, I enjoyed the strong world, but I got more out of it than this one because it's not really that much quote unquote to get out of this one. Um, but I'll probably give this a seven point five, rounded up to an eight. What do you think, Chucky? 
I think it's a a good modern slasher movie that's just you know really in it for some gruesome kills and I mean that that's that's the main reason to watch it. I, I give the movie an eight out of ten as well. From from just pure slasher fun, I think it works pretty well. Some of the acting in the movie is a little up and down, to be honest, but uh, it it doesn't affect my enjoyment a whole lot of the movie. Uh, but I can certainly see if someone was really critical of that, they could kind of pull that aspect apart. But, you know, the the big titties in the movie from that main <laughs> character, that uh, that certainly helps push it to an eight for me. Well, I'm always happy that you can get your big titties. <laughs> Hopefully they have root big hollered nipples. So. 